Pythagoras of Samos is noted to be one of the first humans in recorded history to ascertain the idea of a spherical Earth. Oddly enough, Pythagoras is titled as being possibly one of the very first Freemasons of the ancient Masonic order by Masons such as Albert Mackey. His model of a spherical Earth, tilted on an axis revolving around a stationary sun, was taught as more of a thought experiment, and Pythagoras did not offer up any experimental evidence of this claim. This early heliocentric model does not prove in any way that Earth is a sphere, so I don't see why it's still being brought up in discussions as somehow being veritable proof of the globe. Plato was one of the next people who accepted a globular heliocentric model. His student, Aristotle, argued that the reason the hull of a ship disappears first as it sails away is because the ship gradually curves downward over the curve of the earth at the horizon. This theory is obviously flawed and can be easily disproven. As a ship sails further and further away, it appears to shrink and get smaller starting with the bottom, or hull, due to perspective and the human eye being limited in vision. This can be proven with an easy experiment that you can try for yourself. Go to the beach, and look at a boat, and watch it sail away and disappear, and then pull out a high power zoom camera, a pair of binoculars, or even a telescope, and bring the entire ship back into view. The boat did not sail over a curve, but rather just sailed out of sight. It has nothing to do with the magical curvature of the earth, and everything to do with human eyesight. Another point Aristotle argued was eclipses, but his argument has been excellently debunked multiple times, and by the way, you shouldn't be looking up to the sky to determine the state of what lies beneath your feet. That's like looking up to the curved ceiling of St. Peter's Basilica and arguing that the floor of the Vatican is curved also. It's just not a good argument to be made. Eratosthenes is often brought up by heliocentrists as proof of a distant sun and Earth's curvature due to the different lengths of shadows cast in different places. Eratosthenes described how at high noon in Syene, no shadow was cast and the sun's rays could reach to the bottom of his well. In Alexandria, a metal rod placed vertically casted a significant shadow. However, this can occur on a flat Earth and a globe Earth. Eratosthenes had concluded that rather than the shadows being cast in different angles due to the sun's crepuscular rays, instead, the shadows were cast in different angles due to the Earth's alleged curvature. The main problem is that Eratosthenes made his calculations assuming the sun's rays to be perfectly parallel. But this is not what reality shows. By using sextants, plane trigonometry, and human eyesight, we can observe that the sun's rays are not parallel and Eratosthenes' observations do not prove Earth is a globe, but work just as well on a flat Earth. Freemason Sir Isaac Newton is credited for coming up with the unproven theory of gravity. He insisted that instead of objects falling due to the laws of density and buoyancy, rather objects fell due to a mysterious pulling force known as gravity. We are told that gravity is the reason water curves around the ball Earth, and keeps us stuck from flying off from the Earth's breakneck speed. Of course, this force can be observed nowhere in the natural world, and cannot be tested and proven in any form of experiments. Many people will say, but scientists discovered gravitational waves, and then they proceed to show you a CGI animation of how gravity works. First of all, if gravity was real, then it shouldn't have taken you 500 years just to have your only evidence be a CGI cartoon. Like, I'm just saying. If you try spinning a wet tennis ball, the water will fly off in every direction. No matter how many times repeated or tested, water will never form to the exterior shape of the tennis ball because that defies the natural physics of water. Gravity is unobservable, untestable, unrepeatable, and unprovable which defies the laws of science in which claims must be observable, testable, repeatable, and provable. Henry Cavendish, a British Freemason, was credited for creating an experiment that supposedly proved the existence of gravity. 
The experiment included fixing two large lead balls on opposing ends of a torsion balance and hanging them from the roof of his shed. Cavendish observed the experiment from outside of his shed, looking through the window with a telescope, and two small lead balls were hung close to the large ones, and any slight motion towards each other was said to be proof of the effect of gravity. Even the scientific community has criticized this experiment for its absurdities, and mainly due to the fact that it has never been able to be replicated. Even many heliocentrists do not support the Cavendish experiment because of how preposterous it is. Yet some people for some bizarre reason will still try to look to this experiment as proof of gravity even though it can't be proven, replicated, or tested in any form of experimentation. In the mid-1800s, a man named Leon Foucault began swinging pendulums with pins placed down and a ball and socket joint so it would swing in a circle. He claimed that instead of the pendulum moving, it was actually the earth moving beneath it. However, this can be easily debunked because there is no way to start a pendulum in motion without giving it slight lateral bias. Some pendulums would swing too slow, some would swing too fast, some would swing in the opposite direction, and some wouldn't even swing at all. Although Foucault's pendulum doesn't prove anything, they are still being used across the world as proof of Earth's motion. The Coriolis effect states that sinks, drains, and toilets all spin in one direction in the northern hemisphere, while in the southern hemisphere, they spin the opposite direction. In the same house, however, people can observe water draining in different directions. If water spinning in a direction was the primary result of Earth's motion, then water should never be seen spinning in different directions in the same hemisphere. Yet this is exactly what occurs. The water will drain based on the shape of the basin or the direction the water is flowing in, but not because of the Earth's shape. This trick is easily done by pouring the water in and draining it in the same direction. This is just another excuse to keep the globe Earth model going and proves nothing. Dr. Samuel Robotham was widely known for his scientific experiments at the Bedford level where he put the Earth's curvature to the test. The first experiment involved a flag being stationed on a boat five feet above the surface of the water, and the boat would then sail from Welsh's Dam to Welney Bridge. The two locations were six miles apart, and Dr. Robotham got into the water and held his telescope about eight inches above the water and looked to see if the flag was still visible. Indeed it was. The flag and the boat remained completely visible the whole six miles, and no possible sign of curvature was ever detected. In his Satetic Astronomy, Robotham once wrote, The conclusion was unavoidable that the surface of the water for a length of six miles did not to any appreciable extent decline or curvate downwards from the line of sight. But if the Earth is a globe, the surface of the six miles length of water would have been six feet higher in the center than at the two extremities from which it is concluded that the surface of standing water is not convex, but horizontal. The second experiment included Dr. Robotham placing seven flags along the edge of the water, each one mile apart. Each flag stood five feet above the ground, and at the last flag, he positioned an eight-foot staff with a three-foot tall flag so the tops of the flags would be aligned. Then. Dr. Robotham planted the telescope five feet above the ground and began his experiment. If the Earth curved down at a specific rate, each flag would drop further below the last flag every mile. The first and second flags would determine the line of sight. The third flag would drop eight inches from the last. The fourth would drop 32 inches. The fifth, six feet. The sixth, 10 feet, eight inches. And the seventh flag would drop a clear 16 feet and eight inches. No matter the size of the globe, the amount of curvature would still be visible, but the exact opposite happened. There was not even an inch of curvature detected, and the line of sight of each flag remained level just as it would appear on a flat plane. President of the Royal Astronomical Society in 1871, George Airy attempted to prove the heliocentric model to silence the flat earth talk at the time. 
he began the experiment by filling the telescope with water to slow down the speed of light as it entered. Then, he calculated the tilt to get the correct position for the starlight to enter directly and would measure the speed of the telescope, which would determine the speed of the Earth, by estimating the amount of tilt required for the starlight to come in straight. However, this experiment went down in history as Aries' failure because every time he repeated the experiment, the starlight would come in at the correct angle necessary for no changes to be required, which proved that the stars moved in relative positions to a stationary motionless Earth. Airy had intended the experiment to prove the heliocentric model, but instead ended up proving the geocentric model. Another very well-known experiment that failed to detect Earth's motion was the Michelson-Morley experiment. Albert Michelson and Edward Morley tried passing light through two pathways, one at the angle of the supposed Earth's motion and the other at the right angles to its motion. The light traveling with the Earth's motion should have taken longer to return than the light traveling at the right angles, yet no difference was ever detected, even after repeating it multiple times. This failure to detect Earth's alleged motion would go down as a remarkable proof of the stationary motionless Earth. The natural physics of water are always to remain flat and level. If this were not the case, then why is water used in many cases as a leveling tool? When you fill up a bathtub, why do you call it water level? Water is always level, and no matter what the circumstance is, water will not conform to the shape of an object. We are told that Earth is 70% water, and if we look at what practical demonstration shows us in reality, the nature of Earth would have to be flat and level. Alright, Miss Filming you. Thank you. Thanks, man. So for the hunter quad, mate, this is a challenge, right? See the line that's level with the water? You can bend the boat any way you like, bend the line. I need you to get the surface of the water to follow the bend, follow that level line. There's, there's a hole here, so try and not squeeze the water out, right? Alright, turn it back that way. Just bend it anyway, bend the line anywhere you like. No. You're not going to get the water to bend. No. Do you know why? Why is that? No, I'm asking you if you know I'm why. Sure. You, you can't bend water, can you? No, you Always finds it's level. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Do you say that's your everyday experience? Aye? 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 Do you believe you live on a globe? Probably not. It doesn't feel right. It always seems straight. Always seems straight and level. It's filled with liquid, isn't it? Filled with water. Water can't be bent. Do you think it's important? You want to look into it? Water is always fucking level, okay? Getting back to perspective, there's a great YouTube channel called Phuket Word. I think I said that right. Anyways, this channel is where you can find some good experiments. One of his videos explains excellently how the horizon and human perspective works on the flat earth. So uh, just showing here that from the side, this external reference frame of these bottles on the table, we can see very clearly that they are all the same height. Yeah. Now you can imagine that these bottles are, say, uh, electricity pylons going across Lake Pontchartrain, if you like, or you can imagine that the tops of the bottles represent a sun travelling uh, above the flat earth at a consistent height, yeah? Uh, we have this external reference frame, uh, which with the ball earth we have to imagine anyway, so just apply some more imagination to this little scenario, but take note of the two observations that have to be made here if you want to prove curvature. Okay, we see that they're all the same height, yeah, on this flat, smooth surface. So if I just put the camera down here, uh, we can make a few more observations as well, yeah? People talk about angular size, and yes, there are angles. There is an angle at which these bottles appear to be uh, descending towards the horizon. There is also an angle at which the flat surface appears to be rising up to eye level, 
yeah? It might not be precisely eye level because the table's not very long and we have a wall in the way, but you can see that um, to, I have to raise my hand an inch or so to bring it in line with the end of the flat table, yeah? So this is just, this shows us that the, the flat surface appears to rise to eye level due to perspective, yeah? Just as the bottles appear to get shorter and to converge at the horizon due to perspective. Yeah, and if the row, the table was infinite, and the row of bottles would infinite was infinite, you know that we would just eventually get this this blur and distortion, and we wouldn't see the end of it. Yeah, and of course, if we are outdoors, we've got weather, we've got clouds, we've got distortion um, from temperature differences uh, coming off the surface. Uh, we've got haze, dust, what have you. There is a limit to how far we can see physically. And again, if we um, uh, think about uh, clouds, when we see clouds going off into the distance, uh, those clouds are not too far off into the distance before they appear to meet uh, the surface of uh, the earth or the water, yeah? So this gives us an idea of really how far we can see, which isn't really that far. And again, it all depends on conditions. By the way, Jay DeCasby and Eric DeBay have set up a challenge where the first person to prove the Earth is a ball will be rewarded $10,000. If you want $10,000 and want to go down as the first human in history to prove the globe Earth, then I would recommend checking out this challenge. Go to Eric DeBay's YouTube channel and watch his video on it to learn the rules and conditions and to learn more information. All of the experiments presented prove not only that the Earth is a level plane, but also that it is motionless as well. No successful repeatable experiment in history has ever been able to prove the fallacious theory of heliocentrism or the spherical Earth. Rather, there have been successful repeatable experiments conducted that prove the Earth is flat and motionless. Take this useful information and share it with everyone. And remember, keep spreading truth. Peace.